Hey, what's up guys? My name's Isaiah Hill, and we are continuing on with Indigo Prophecy. Uh, we just uh, found out more about um, Carlos Fears. We found out about Lucas, and he's going to someone's house. And Tyler, actually, I want to play basketball because it, because this is like a, for two hundred dollars, or like just pure friendship. Done everything Carla had asked. Now I just wanted to relax and play some b-ball, and also settle the score I had with Jeffrey. <laughs> okay, warm up. Freezing cold temperatures. All right. Right. Okay, here's the rules. First to score 10 points wins the game and $200. That cool for you? You can kiss your money goodbye. Well, <laughs> see, let's do it. Since I'm such a good sport, you start with the ball. Ah, oh, he blocked it. I messed up too, so I'm not that upset. <laughs> I bet Jeffrey's regretting this. And guys, I don't mean to like say, oh yeah, he's doing a good job because it's actually pretty difficult doing some of these quick time events, like I said, while talking. I just stole the ball. I'll give it to him. Ooh, I, I, I actually thought he almost got it. I failed this. Yeah, I knew I failed because my finger slipped off the uh, right stick. Walk it off. <laughs> what? I I thought I nailed all of them. Ooh. 
Ow. That actually looked like it hurt. Nice. Three more points. Yes. Now that was pure poetry in motion. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jeffrey just hates us now. I'll give it to him. That was pretty good. I have to say, I'm not doing it as bad as I thought I would on the quick time since I haven't played this game in forever. Hey, no shoving. Yeah, you might. Be, yeah, you might uh, lose three hundred dollars, but it doesn't mean anything because Tyler borrowed like a hundred. I messed that up. I know I did. Yeah. It's always my right hand. My left hand's pretty sturdy, but. And that's the weird part. Oh no, Jeffrey's winning. Yeah, Jeffrey's just being even more of a sore loser. And yeah, I know there's money on the line, but he accepted. <laughs> Game point. Nice. Ooh. Yeah, Jeffrey's angry. He hits the lane. He drives and he scores. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our play of the day. Yo, you D up pretty good for a white cop. You ain't so bad yourself. You got some game. Maybe I should have mentioned. I did some ball in college. So, as for the hundred, it's game over, man. You're a real SOB, Tyler. I know, and that's why you like me, Jeffrey. <laughs> At the end of the day, they're still friends. Okay, let's go to Carl. Shooting room. Training Sergeant Mitchell, that's him, in the second to last row. Thank you. Sergeant Mitchell? Yes? I'm Inspector Carla Valenti. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions concerning one of my investigations? Young lady, I haven't worked in investigations for a long time. I doubt I can be much help. It's concerning an old case, but I'm still looking into it. The Kirsten case? Because you can't locate the file, is that right? Yes, that's right. The file's been classified. How'd you like to do some target practice with me? Sure. Why not? Alright. <clears throat> target practice. Your gun is right in front of you. Go ahead. Oh, 
That's pretty cool. Innocent. Boy, I thought I hit him. Oh, it adds time. You're a very good shot. Hmm. I have to say you're a heck of a lot better than most I see around here. So, what do you want to know about the Kirsten case? Yeah, I could, well, like I could instance, have done better. What exactly happened? A guy named Kirsten's calmly shopping in his local supermarket. He's in the kitchen accessories aisle when someone picks up a knife and stabs him. Victim. What do you know about the victim? Nothing unusual in his past. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Any other interesting elements in the case? Ah, one more detail. The killer then used the knife to carve some symbols on his own forearms. Very oh. good stuff. It looked like a, a snake or a serpent. Maybe he just cracked, lost it for a moment. Some people are like time bombs just waiting to go off. That's the first theory I had, until I saw the coroner's report. Each knife entry cut cleanly into an artery, leading to the heart with perfect accuracy. Precision like that, I mean, the guy had a one in a million chance of doing that. Even if he'd been a surgeon. Yeah.
Excellent target. Looks like you're a natural. You didn't stop your investigation there, did you? No, this case really intrigued me. What could have motivated him to do something like that? I mean, I checked out piles of leads and, and discovered almost by accident that this wasn't the first. There had been other killings with the same profile. You mean where the killer had the same bizarre M.O. and stuck around afterwards? Exactly. Three weeks earlier, on the other side of town, another stabbing victim in the middle of the street, no motive. Then I discovered a third case, two months prior to that. Then another, and another, Jeez. and always the same M.O. Links. You mean to say the killings are all connected? No idea. All I know is that the murders were basically identical. He slices the arteries leading to the heart, slices them cleanly, and then carves a symbol on his own arms. Good for kids. And your investigation into the supermarket killer. Did it lead anywhere? You should drop this one, Detective. This is not just a murder case. There's something very odd going on behind the scenes. Looks like I'll be starting a new file. So this is like where Heavy Rain got the idea. This is the street her house is on. There's no point looking any further. Here it is. All right. Is there anyone here? Someone texted me and said, hey, I got the reference. Why did you make that reference? Uh, it's really a reference of uh, those who didn't get it. It's a reference to uh, Mel Brooks. Uh, old plates on the shelf. Uh, in particular, the producers. And I'll be doing a review on that soon. I don't know sink. when, though. Is anyone at home? Sheets on all the furniture, as if the house hasn't been lived in for a long time. Hello. Are are you Agatha? Why do you want to talk to Agatha? Father Marcus Kane sent me here. I have a problem. I need to talk to her about it. A problem? And who on earth doesn't have problems? Good point. not have eyes to see. Be kind, young man. Push me over to my birds. It'll be more comfortable for us to talk over there. <laughs> K. 
candlesticks, yeah, let's do this an real old quick. grimoire. Weird atmosphere. This is actually very difficult to control, guys. That's why I'm not talking so much. its entire life locked up in a cage and yet still keep on singing away. What brings you here, young man? Tell me, what is your cage like? Possessed. I killed a man. It, it was like I was possessed. I watched it all happen, but I had no control over my actions. Sounds like a rather commonplace story to me. Don't you think that it might simply be because you've gone mad? I had a vision of another man making exactly the same movements as me, and of a little girl who called out to me for help. In the cupboard, you will find a little bag of seeds. Be a good boy. Feed some to my little darling, will you? Have you experienced any other strange manifestations since then? Have you had any odd dreams or visions? Yes. I see things as if the reality in front of me was deforming, becoming horrible. Are you able to attach anything concrete to your visions, such as a symbol or a sign, maybe a word? When I regained control of myself after the murder, this symbol had been cut into my wrist with a knife. A snake. Two open jaws. Oh, dear God. What does it mean? There's only one way for me to be sure. Please, push me into the sitting room.
right, there we go. You'll find some candles in one of the cupboards. Take them and place them in the candle holders. There should be some matches in the kitchen. Go find them and light the candles. Okay. Stuffed crow. Excuse me, could you tell me again what I'm supposed to do? You'll find some candles in one of the cupboards. Take them and place them in the candle holders. There should be some matches in the kitchen. Go find them and light the candles. Okay, thank you. Ooh, stuffed out. Look in here. Okay, he was actually stuck. <clears throat> okay, let's go check, uh, not cupboard. I always saw this uh, game like uh, the movie The Fugitive, which is like one of my favorite um, movies of all time. The reason why I see it as that because you like both the um, you like both the uh, escapee, the prisoner, or in this case, the, you like the fugitive in one way, and uh, you like uh, the police, police officers. Like you're like. Really, who's going to, uh, who's going to catch who? The game of cat and mouse, but. Wait. Are you serious? Did I have a candle with me the entire time? Oh. Hate it when I feel this stupid. <laughs>
ready to begin. Turn off the light, close the curtains, and sit down next to me. Okay, curtains first. The only way to understand what has happened to you is to try to go deep into your unconscious memory. Whoever it was that forced you to commit this murder has erased himself from your memory. But there still must be a trace in your unconscious. I can help you to locate it. It's an exhausting ceremony, and there's always a risk involved. Do you or do you not wish to try it? Yes, I do. Give me your hand. All right. Now this I remember because I always liked it. Now, close your eyes. I want you to empty your mind and open wide the doors to your unconscious. And let me enter there. That's it. We're still together. Lucas, are you there? Yes. I want you to return to the restaurant just before the events began. Evacuate all extraneous thoughts and wander freely through your memory. Standing outside the restaurant. I want you to enter the restaurant now. Okay. I've gone into the restaurant. What do you see? I see some customers. And I see the waitress. Can you see the table where you are sitting? I'm looking. There's a police officer. He's sitting at the counter. Concentrate, Lucas. Now, walk to your table. I'm in the restroom, and so is the other man. What's he doing? He's urinating. He doesn't suspect anything. And you, Lucas? Where are you? I don't know. I can't see myself. There I am. I was in a toilet stall. Oh my god. I'm holding a knife. He doesn't see me. Calm yourself, Lucas. Keep your concentration. I can't control my steps. I'm walking up behind the man. He doesn't see me. I don't want to. I don't want to, but I can't stop myself. I want you to re-enter the restaurant. But now, it is prior to going into the toilet stall. Do you understand, Lucas? Before. 
Where are you now? I'm in the restaurant dining room again. Are you sitting at your table? Yes, I am. I can see myself. What are you doing, Lucas? I'm eating. I'm eating and reading a book. A book? Yes. Shakespeare. The Tempest. What else do you see? As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant. A sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. What did you say? It's a passage from Shakespeare's Tempest. That's what you're reading, is it not? Yes. Someone's coming toward me. A man. Who is it? A customer? I don't know. I think so. I can't see his face. And what does he say to you? I... I, I don't know. I, I can't remember. You must concentrate, Lucas. You need to remember. It's one of my favorite books. A shame so few people read Shakespeare these days. Would you mind if I sat down for a moment? Ah, it's just that... The man sat down at my table and... Now the waitress is coming. Sir? A coffee, please. The waitress. It's as if she didn't see the man, like he was invisible. So much has been written about the Tempest, especially concerning the theme of magic. And now, what's happening, Lucas? I, I don't know. The man gives off a very strange energy. It's hard to describe. Go on, Lucas. What happens after that? Do you believe in the power of magic? No, I don't. Listen, um... You're wrong. You know there's much more to our universe than can be perceived by the naked eye. Your coffee, sir. Thanks, Kate. The waitress has brought him his coffee. But she's talking to me as if I was the one who ordered it. She doesn't know that he's there. She can't see him. And now what's happening? Listen, I don't want to be rude, but I'd rather eat alone. <laughs> Paralyzed. I can't feel my body. I can't move. The man, Lucas. Where is the man? He, he stood up. He's gone out. He's in my head now. He controls me. Follow the man, Lucas. Hurry. I command you to follow that man closely. going out the rear door. Follow him. Your mind and his are now linked. You can see what he sees. You know who that man was, don't you, Agatha? No. I don't know. I'm not sure who he is. Yes, you do know who he is. You understood it all as soon as you felt the scars on my arms. What do these symbols mean, Agatha? Tell me what that man's done to me! You should go now, Lucas. There's nothing more that I can do for you. You could at least explain what the hell's happening to me! He made me kill a man! I want to know! I need to know! I have to verify certain things. There's nothing more I can tell you today. 
Come back tomorrow night at the same time. I'll explain more then. Alright guys, I believe that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. You guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you guys wish to see more of my Let's Play of this or any of my other Let's Plays or my movie reviews, by all means, subscribe. If you guys want to share this with your friends and family or anyone else, so by all means, go ahead. If you guys want to ask, say, or request something, comment down below. And if you got, and I really hope that you guys have an amazing day, and I really hope that you guys also enjoyed. My name's Isaiah Hill. Thank you for... Tuning in.